This is the DJ Henderson Podcast. Today's guest is a Tampa, Florida native who spent his high school years at Sickles High School. As a four-year varsity player, he wrapped up his high school career with the state championship ring. Since then, he's had a trying but worth it college career and is currently a senior at Allen University. Marcus Cohen, welcome to the show, bro. Appreciate it, Brody. Thank you for having me. No problem. Talk to me about where you're from, how you grew up, your upbringing, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm from Tampa, Florida. I went to school at Sickles High School. Uh, my um, grit, my upbringing. Um, let's see, just started playing basketball around the age of five. Uh, just fell in love with the game, and then just just kept going with it from there. Who did you grow up watching when you first started watching basketball? Well, LeBron, obviously. Yeah, sure. you know, like I like the Lakers in five, five or six max. This for the finals, but uh, point guard wise, I say. Coming up, Steve Nash as well. Uh, I watched him play with him when he had uh, Mark Stoudemire on his team on 2K, all of that. Um, and now, I, I really like Dame game now. Man, he be spazzing, so. For sure. When did you know basketball was like what you really wanted to do? Uh, I'd say about, about sixth grade, for sure. Uh, making the high school, our, our middle school team, you know, how that went. Um, and then really, really it was like freshman year coming in and then having the opportunity to start as a freshman. That was pretty big time, never happened at Sickles for the most part, unless you was like a top player. But that, that was pretty, pretty impressive for me. Um, and that built a lot of confidence as well. How hard is it just, like you said, not that many people at Sickles did it, not that many people at my school did it in high school. How hard is it? And what is it like playing varsity as a freshman? Uh, it's uh, going from, of course, going from middle school to high school, the pace of the game changes as well as the physicality. So uh, just, I, I get, I, I mean, I kind of came in the right year in a sense because they was loaded the year before I came as well. Uh, um, just having like the right opportunity and being able to be in that position to have the opportunity to start as a freshman was pretty big time. So. Uh, it's just something to be grateful for. What was Sickles like when you first got there? It was just a big school, to be honest with you. Being, I think we was 9A or maybe 7A at that time and then moved up to 9A my senior year. But uh, it was just different. A lot of people, a lot of different cultures. Um, just a new setting from high school or from middle school to high school, of course. Being as a bigger, bigger campus. Um, you gotta stay on top of things yourself, stuff like that. Like nobody's really gonna hold you accountable except for yourself. I feel like sick was kind of similar to like our school. Like our school, when I first got there, I was just I was kind of shook because it was like twenty five hundred people. I got the lunch. I ain't even had. I could barely find those seat. Like eight hundred people in the lunch. Like I already know. Outside at the lunch table, I'm like, dang. Facts. Talk to me about your relationship with Coach Garcia, how it grew over the years, and what it was like having a good coach like that. Uh, he's a mentor. He's a mentor to me for sure. Just because um, just watching me in AAU, because uh, his son was like in a similar AAU tournaments as well. So just uh, building a relationship with him as well as like back when I was younger, my sister went to Sibbles and played basketball. Uh, just being in the gym there every day and just building a relationship and a bond. And uh, he's taught me, he's still, like, we still keep in, keep in contact for sure. He just makes sure I'm doing good, all that. And um, just, just picking his brain, because he went to Florida, so that's that's a big-time school, big-time program as well. So just picking his brain. And uh, just, it was more about, like, becoming a man than sports in general. Like, he taught me more than just how to make the right read off a of pick-and-roll, how to encourage your teammates, like, be a leader, stuff like that. So it was, he, he taught me a lot. What was it like playing with players like Bryce, Nari, Chase, all those kind of guys? What was it like playing with good, like good teammates? And what was it like going into your senior season? What were your expectations, and how did your senior season go? Of course, uh, playing with them, th those are my guys. For real. like playing with them is fun. I always kept things like, not not like we were, we we knew that we could hold each other accountable and not just be like friendly type stuff. Like we 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 had each other back held each other accountable, make sure we was doing what we had to do. And just building that chemistry from 
Beamer came my sophomore year, so me and him had that chemistry and work was their freshman year or my, my sophomore year. So having them two and just, just keep working and getting our bodies right, building that chemistry. And then when we got Chase and Inari as well, that helped as well because that's a lot of length. And not too many teams in Hillville County had length like that. So it was pretty fun. That team was for sure like a real solid team for sure. Y'all y'all whacked us all three times we played. We played y'all twice in district, district championship. It was definitely tough. Talk to me about what what all y'all accomplished that year and what it took to get to that point. Uh, we started, I think we might have ended up winning the little uh, summer league little showcase or whatever, whether it was summer league tournament, something like that. So that was a good a good starting point, just um, just building chemistry from there. Um, and then to start the season, we ended up losing. We actually lost our, our second preseason game to Calvary Christian. So that was kind of an eye-opener. Like, you can't take nobody lightly type. So that, uh, that, that's how we started off, like, preseason. And then we started out hot. After that, after that one, everybody was like, yeah, we got we to gotta tighten up. We just started off hot after that and just kept the train rolling. And we hit a couple bumps in the way. Um, in the championship of Battle of the Villages, we played – I'm trying to think what a team, but it was Jackson Hayes, Jackson Hayes' team. We played them in the championship, and they lit us up. We was like, dang. Cause they was they was really hooping, hooping. So it was like we wasn't used to that. Uh, and then, then after that, I think we went right in to play Hillsboro, and we we didn't, we started game off rough that game. Uh, we knew that was going like that was going to big be a big one, and it was turn for that game. But we we definitely wanted that win, but we saw it as yeah, we'll take a win now instead of in the playoffs to where it's really going to affect us. So we were, we was, we wasn't really down on that loss, but we just kind of learned from it and it was like you know now we now we really can't make no mistakes and uh, just kept going from there. Now, and, I could tell y'all was locked in because we played y'all we played y'all twice regular season and then the district championship, bro. We came we had to play at y'all gym. We came. We started the game off, bro. We didn't score. I don't think we scored a point the whole first quarter. I was – bro, I mean, I wasn't playing, like, a big role. I was getting in the game a little piece. I wasn't really, like, ready to be playing no big, like, crazy minutes. And there was people playing ahead of me. But I was just like, damn, like, this is cr- I ain't never seen nothing like it. Like, it, we couldn't make no shots. Y'all was playing defense. Like, it was crazy. What was the playoffs like after y'all played us heading into Lakeland? Uh, first playoff game we played. Y'all played Kathleen. Yeah, Kathleen, Kathleen. Yeah, we played them. We played them first game. Yeah, so we played them first game. Uh, we kind of started off slow, to be honest. It was it was close. Like I think we was up by like two or either down by four at halftime. Um, and then we just ended up like just locking up, going up by like 15, 20 to end the game. And then the second game against Lakeland, that was that was a crazy game. That was really crazy. Cause they they play great defense, uh, you know they they some dogs out there. But we just hit shots, and then I ended up having a game winning block, and we we rushed the floor before the game was even over tight. But <laughs> it, was, it was that was that was a tough game for sure. We got lucky to make it out that one, and then in the final in conference final uh, regional finals, we played a team from Melbourne. yeah Melbourne. Uh, I don't, we wasn't really struggling that game. I think we was on because we were really locking up and Ari was turning up. I know he had a fast break dunk. Yeah, we were really turning up on him. But making it to Lakeland, that was, like, after after that game, it was like, it didn't feel real tight. Like, we going to Lakeland tight. Uh, uh, and then I know that first game against um, Lakewood Ranch. We played Lakewood Ranch. And I played them like, damn near every every year of AAU basketball. So we already knew about them. Um, we knew they were, they was pretty much they were like it was fundamentally sound, all that, play team ball, shooters, big man. Um, and they was probably they was probably nervous just like we were because we both had a whole bunch of turnovers. And I probably had about five turnovers myself. I played bad but had some big, big plays. Uh, but that was that was a tough game as well. Work work went dumb. Um, he probably him and him and Bryce probably one of the main reasons we made it out of that game, and then like the championship, it was like 
you know, nobody really think we're going to win. Like, like, cause we, we, we were seeing a whole bunch of articles on Instagram or Twitter. Talking about, oh yeah. Um, Tallahassee Lincoln, they got these two big men. They're going to work us. Like, I'm like, man, we really not seeing nothing like that. Like, it sound good. Like now we the underdog. I was like, before we wasn't no underdogs and now we was. So it's like, we really don't got nothing to lose type. So we just locked in, just listen to coach playing defense. Um, making the bigs have to do stuff that they didn't want to do. So it was just, that was, that was probably, uh, that that one didn't hit till like after two weeks. Like, like damn, we really actually t- actually state champions. Like, yeah, that, that was really a crazy feeling. In the moment, I was like shocked. I'm like, damn. And then we got mad love after that. But it was just a crazy ride for sure. Man, y'all had the whole, y'all beat us three times and I was happy y'all won that bit, so. I already know what the, what the whole city was on. Like, that was big time for sure. I don't think nobody had won a state championship in Tampa in, like, 35, 40 years, something like that. Like, it was crazy. I felt like – I really felt like I won, for real. <laughs> I was like, they beat us. So, that's that's who needed to win. Yeah, she was crazy. Talk to me about your AAU ball experience, who you played with, some of the players you played with, good times you had, things like that. Uh, first two years – Let's see. Freshman year, I played for Nike Team Florida uh, on the EYBL circuit. That was that was a, that was a pretty good experience for me because that's also like I, we played with Shot Clock, and I said not a lot of good time like big time dudes like Jason Tatum was playing uh, was playing a grade up, which is crazy to think of because he damn near the same age as me, and he out there killing them like that. So I was like, damn, they're really different. Um, but no, that was a good experience. I think I played well in the circuit. We as a team, like, I think we, we didn't end up finishing the whole circuit because we had some other, like, personal issues and stuff like that with the coaching staff, I guess. But it was – I played with Darius Banks, um, Mayan Kerr, Emmett Williams, Antoine, um, my boy DeAndre, he go to FAMU now. Uh, like, it was, a, it was a lot of good competition. Sean Mobley, he at UCF. So, we had we had a pretty good team. So, um, that, that was interesting. And then played with Florida Elite. My sophomore year, um, as well as in middle school, I played with them as well. So that was that was a good experience building uh, relationships with them. And then what really changed my life was uh, playing with Team Spates and like the way that they played, like they played like free. So because I knew, I knew Coach Terrence um, and Coach Holmes and all them for a minute because Coach Garcia is like good friends with them, so he put me on there. And that was probably the best decision I probably made for me because they let me run the point as well as like pretty much do whatever. So, and then Beamer came and we just ran the same pick and roll or pick and pop type deal. So that was pretty much our go-to. So that was, that was fun for the most part. Definitely miss AAU. That, that was lit. AAU probably, I tell people all the time, AAU the most fun like I, I've had in my whole life. And I wasn't even, I'm 19, I ain't even grown now. But back then, 13, 12, 14, 15, like those years was the best time. Yeah, you just have fun hooping. When did you start to see your stock rise? Um, I say about junior, like the end of sophomore year, junior year, and then it definitely picked up way more senior year. Uh, cause I was I wasn't even committed going into my senior year. Um, so just just weighing out them options and just seeing how that season went. And how we were able to bond with the with that group of guys and just make something happen and come together, that was pretty much the big like. After after I say I had a whole bunch of coaches watching the states game. After that is when I kind of blew up as well, because they started showing more interest and stuff. And I took like four visits and all that. So. You ended up going to Mercer. How did they find out about you? And what was it like when they started recruiting you? What made them stand out to you? I honestly don't know how they where I. Don't, I don't remember where or how, but I'm pretty sure it was in. A, it had to be in like an Atlanta tournament. Pretty sure. But yeah, just getting once I got that. Um, once they started showing interest in me, just started talking to the coaches, building a relationship, and doing some uh, research on the school, where it's at, how far it was from home, uh, the past like seasons, how how they've been doing the past seasons and the roster, um, with the opportunity of me playing and stuff like that, and just learning. That was that was pretty much a big uh, impact on how on what what made me decide to go there as well as being close to home, and and it was a D one school. So, 
What was it like when you first got there? Like, what was going through your mind when you first arrived on campus? You was by yourself away from home? Uh, I mean, it wasn't really, it wasn't really too bad because, like, I don't really be getting homesick. So, like, I don't, and I like my long time, so it wasn't too bad. Like, I wasn't really chilling. I wasn't really tripping about it. But it was definitely different being away, like, not being home and, uh, like, not being around my family, just having to be, like, like, now nah, I really got to grow up and be a, a young man type stuff and just handle my own business. Nobody's going to hold me accountable type stuff. So that was, that was definitely the, the most uh, most transition from high school to college. How important is time management when you're in college? Oh, it's very important. You got to know how, like, you know, you can have five classes on top of weights, individuals, and you got practice as well and then some days you got conditioning in the morning some days you don't um you just got you really just got to have good time management and be flexible have be able to be flexible because like everything's not like there's many many different athletes many different programs on campus so you got to be able to fluctuate with what they got to do like cheerleaders dancers they be in the gym sometimes so you got to fluctuate with that but just just having good time management and knowing how to get things done on time or ahead of time so you don't have to worry about it is probably the, like the most important thing to getting through college. What would you tell somebody that's like stuck on the level that they're getting recruited to play at or where they're about to play at? Like, what would you tell somebody? Just live in a moment. Like, don't, don't, don't try to, I say, don't try to, don't kill the opportunities that are like in, in front of you right now. Cause you're never going to know, like, if that's going to be the opportunity for you. Like, go if, you, if you're if stuck at a level right now, go somewhere where they want you to succeed, where they want you to, like, where they want you to be successful and you're their main guy type stuff. Because I, 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 I could have – I made – I'm not going to say I made a bad decision, a bad college decision, but it definitely impacted me because I didn't go where I was wanted. I went where I was, like, the second option, like the second recruit that they wanted. So that all, that can play a big big role whether you want or two, but definitely go where you want it because that's going. You never know what can happen. Coaching change, stuff like that. It's it's real college basketball, real. It's a business, so you you gotta do what's best for yourself as well. That's what I would say too. Just like now, I'm at I'm in junior college. I'm about to transfer to hopefully a bigger school next year, and that's like I've been a part of not not saying this situation, but situation in general where I wasn't like the guy like that was like wanted it was more so just where I wanted to play stuff like that but next year like that's the that's the main thing I'm looking at like I want to go somewhere where somebody wants me where they they're vested in my success and they really care versus just the name of a school or whatever the case make a difference for real it makes a big difference this year you're at Allen University talk to me about what it was like getting there and how's it been moving to South Carolina Coming here, it was kind of my last option, kind of like, cause I had I'm not I had a rough college uh, career, it wasn't the best, could have been better, but that's kind of on me too. But just just coming here, uh, giving it, getting this opportunity, talking to Vern, I, I was in Vern here all the time, talking to Vern, I'm trying to like you my dog, we we always hooping and stuff at pickup, like I'm trying to hoop with you for my last year type stuff. And he was like, yeah yeah, I'm I'm about that, cause he he needed some help out here too, so. Coming out here, just playing with him. Me and him got got great chemistry. Um, we he hold me accountable. He keeps me in the gym. I keep him in the gym. All that and just like coach, coach out here. He he like he a players coach. So he's not like you feel me. Oh system, system, system. Like he's gonna let you guys like he'll let us rock out as long as it's like in in the system. All right. Just having a players coach can make a huge difference on your development as well. Like he's giving me hella confidence talking about just shoot the ball like. Cause he really don't care on offense if, if if you do out of pocket stuff. But I don't do that. But nah, just having a players coaches is a big they make a, di- a big difference in your development as well as your confidence level, and like him him legit give you the keys to like yo know, like do what you got to do, make us win, make us better, make your teammates better, stuff like that. So you definitely got to have to play at any level. You got to have your own set level of confidence. But having a coach that but that believes in you, that's instilling confidence in you, that's a big difference. Like, you don't, you don't have to feel like you're looking over your shoulder or if you mess up, you're going to get taken out or if you miss a shot or shoot a bad shot, you're going to get taken out. Like, that's 
that's important for sure. Yeah, he all about defense though. So as long as you playing defense and not shooting dumb shots, you good. So you touched on it, but how fun is it gonna be playing with Vern this year? Uh, it's gonna be very fun because it's like it's like I could play out like. We've been in the gym so much that I'm confident, like, playing off the ball. He confident playing off the ball. Uh, me and him can run pick and rolls to get a mismatch for each other. And I'm going to slip it, stuff like that. Like a slip, pop, all types of stuff. So just, just playing with him and his energy and his, like, the way he played the game, he don't play the game selfish. So, and he want to win. So just, just being around that. And it's one of my homeboys and make it even more fun. So it's like, that's like my brother on the court and off the court. So. It's going to be fun. It should be a very fun year. For sure. How good of a player is he for people that have never seen him play that don't know who he is? He can hoop. Nah. He can hoop. He'll lock you up, pick you up full. Uh, he got a whole bunch of moves. He crafty. He can shoot it, uh, finish, pass, all that. Everything. Real. Shout out to Vern, man. Got to get Vern on the show. What's the mindset going into this season? Uh, just... Just finish my last year of college strong, see what I could make shape, get an opportunity to either go overseas and now I'm going to start this business up, keep working, have a whole bunch of side hustles, just kind of, you know, make it in this corrupt world. So, you know, corrupt clothing company coming soon. That's all you got to know. Yes, sir. Corrupt clothing, y'all. Go get that. Yes, sir. For people that haven't seen you play, describe your game, what you like to do, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, Pass first guard, um, can get a bucket when needed to get a bucket. Uh, I, I just like to make my teammates better, just make the right read. Like, just growing up, I've been taught to play the game the right way instead of, you know, just trying to ball haul, you know, go get a bucket every time down. So I try to I try to even it up, score when I can score. But just try to make, make my teammates better and just be vocal leader on the court. How's your game grown from your freshman year of college to now? Uh, my game has grown and I've lost some bounce over the years, but <laughs> I still got some bounce, but just, uh, it's grown as far as like just making the right reads, knowing what to do on the court, what not to do, uh, as well on the defensive side, just knowing like how to make the, uh, the offensive player do what you want them to do without knowing that you're going to be right there for either a steal, uh, charge, um, all types of stuff. So just just learning, just learning the ways of the game and like the flow of the game, has, like over the past two years, has been different. How hard have you had to work to get to this point? Uh, it's, it's been it's been a long journey for real. Late nights, early mornings in the gym with Coach Garcia. Uh, just a whole bunch of weightlifting days. Like you you're not gonna get here like just from work one out one workout a day like that's not gonna work you got to put time and uh just work on your craft try to master what you're good at and then work on what's not what you're not good at so that can elevate your game some more so just just working hard um never giving up like don't compare yourself to the next man like it's a different journey it's everybody has a different journey in life as well so your purpose might be different but just as long as you work let your work show and you'll be fine like simple as that what motivates you to keep working hard and just to keep going? Uh, my family and my niece. My niece, definitely. Just to keep her happy, uh, make sure she's good in her future life. Because um, I treat her like she's my own. Like, I love that little girl. But just my niece, that's added motivation as well as my family, trying to make sure they're good, trying to make sure they, ne they never struggle, stuff like that. Just try to, trying to be the best me I can be and provide the best life for me and my future family. What would be one thing that you would tell somebody that's up and coming that's trying to make it? Uh, up and coming, trying to make it. Just try to be like, like a, a whole bunch of people say the same thing. Just trust the process. Like, don't let, like, there's going to be a whole bunch of roadblocks in the road. You ain't got to let them derail you or take your confidence or your vision away. Like, just keep working through that. If you're working, like I said, the work going to show and you're overcoming them obstacles in life because that's what life is. Like, a whole bunch of obstacles. It's how you deal with them and how you overcome and what you learn from them obstacles. What are your future goals in basketball? Um, my future goals, I mean, obviously I want to get a ring my last year, help uh, this team get a ring. 
become the best like young man I can be, learn from the season. What can I what can I take away from this season? Uh just trying to hold these guys accountable because it's a different it's a different group of guys out here than you used to coming from they most of them is from the hood. So like, you know, they're not really with the school work. So you gotta stay on top of them, stuff like that. But just just trying to make sure uh they're doing the right thing as well as me staying in the gym. Like I said, trying to get that ring, and hopefully I get an opportunity to go overseas. If not, I ain't really tripping. Uh, there's a lot of ways to make money in the world, so don't 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 think that you got to make it in basketball. Like like everybody does. Like don't try to think, oh, I got to make it in, in basketball to be successful. Like there's a ton of ways to make money to be successful in this world. Because basketball, I'm gonna stop bouncing. So when it does, you just gotta be prepared. When did you decide that you would be starting a clothing company, and what? What did it take for you to start taking action on that plan? Um, I mean, I kind of had, like, since a young, since a shit, I, I was thinking about, like, oh, how can I be dripped out? Like, not not dripped out, like, as in, oh, I'm trying to stunt type, but, like, I just, I like fashion. So, like, benches, tees, like, stuff like this, this, like, cool, like, cozy drip. Uh, I've been in the shoes probably my whole life. Everybody had a pair of Jordans. I'm not, let me say, not say everybody. Most Hoopers had a pair of Jordans coming up. So, you know, that's like, oh, that's a, that's a heat shoe. So, um, this, this from a young age, I knew I wanted to have some type of clothing or shoe business or combine the two. But um, just following, like, just following, uh, like, different, different uh, digital creators or clothing designers on Instagram, seeing, like, like their type of style, how the, how the style changes over the years and stuff like that. Um, it it, it kind of brought me to my own vision of corrupt clothing and like basically what what corrupt clothing company is gonna stand for. It's gonna be like, uh, it's either it's either corrupt clothing company or corrupt society. Or I might have both, like in intertwined with the two. But just the vision for that is like trying to spread love and positivity throughout my like love positivity and as well as education throughout my my clothing my clothing company so i was probably want to do like for everybody who order uh i'd be like a note card about a certain individual that happened like like it could be uh police brutality death from brianna taylor all the way down like just educate try to educate people on why the world is corrupt and what like like we really got to spread love and positivity to one each other one one another because of how corrupt the world is. Like, you never know when it's gonna be somebody last day. Uh, so you gotta just show love and just, as well as, as well as give people a different, like, design, like a different style, a different, like, you know, different type of style of clothing. So, something like that. Shout out to Corrupt Clothing, Corrupt Society, coming to you soon. In the works. Now we're gonna do the speed round just to wrap it up. All right. What's your number one thing to do in your free time? 2K21. What bills you What bills you rocking on 2K21, man? I got a paint beast uh, and a two-way sharpshooter. Two-way sharpshooter. Who are your top five rappers out right now? Top five rappers. Uh, Lil Baby. Uh, Lil Papa. Uh, G Herbo. Drake definitely up there. Definitely, definitely number one. Uh, let's see, a little baby. And I say that fifth spot, I go, I go, I go, I go, I'll do Roddy Rich. I like Roddy Rich. What do you see yourself doing after basketball? Uh, get into the money. <laughs> I just keep it simple like that. Get into the money. For sure. What's your major? Uh, sports management. But probably, I think a minor. I think I might do a minor in business. Will the Bucks win the Super Bowl this year? Of course. Of course. In the city at Ray J. Lit. Who's been the biggest influence on your life this far? Biggest influence on my life? Definitely my parents. Just learning from them, seeing how hard they work to provide uh, provide for me and my sisters. So they definitely an influence. I want to I get back to them, make sure they're straight. Stuff like that. I try to, I try to, try to not ask them for too much because they do a lot for me. So just try to, you know, just try to get my own money. So I ain't gotta ask them. 
for sure. What do you want to improve on the most on the court this year? Um, definitely my shot. That's that's been my downfall of my game, but uh, me and Vern have put in the work, so definitely my shot. If you could meet and spend a day with three people dead or alive, who would they be and why? Um, LeBron, Kobe, and and my grandparents. Uh, LeBron and Kobe, because. Uh, I really have. I'm, I'm obviously a LeBron fan. LeBron is my my greatest player, greatest basketball player of all time. Uh, Kobe, because just just to pick pick his brain of how mentally strong he was on and off the court, and um, just because like over the years, I wasn't really a Kobe fan growing up. I felt like he he was a ball hog, but then after he died, I kind of like I started to appreciate his game and, and just the energy he played with, how hard he played. So that's well, and then my grandparents, because you know I miss I miss my people. So sure. in the day with them. Well, that's it for the show, bro. I appreciate you taking the time out doing this. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. Tell everybody where they can find you: Instagram, Twitter. Uh, Instagram underscore underscore Marcus three underscore underscore. Uh, Twitter Marcus two coin three. I don't really be on Twitter, but that's about it. You know, I get my Snapchat. I get in trouble. Yes, sir. Thank you, bro. Again, appreciate it. Oh, yes, sir.